All right, so I know it's been a little while since I posted a video. I've been hard at work um, trying to get this HP Pro Lion online. Um, ran into a few issues with it, but um, I'm able to overcome most of those. Uh, still have some stuff to work out with the seller um, as one of the um, slots on the motherboard for the RAM is um, non-functional. So um, that kind of leaves me in a little bit of a lurch, but um, able to kind of work my way through that. Um, so what was it? Friday of last week, the pallet, it was either Friday or Thursday, um, the pallet with the server arrived. Um, I have to say that once I kind of figured the server out, um, and got the power supplies out of it and then the CPU tray out. The rest of it was fairly easy to take. Um, it's got handles on all four corners. I was able to go in there, grab that, take it up the stairs, no real issues. Um, I will say though that fully loaded, <laughs> this server is a pain to work with. Um, it is so heavy. Um, and, it, you know, there were some, uh, dur moments for sure with the, um, I, I, I set the servers so that they would be, um, they would line up exactly, um, three U's and then four U's, but the tolerances were too tight. And I guess the super micro is either sagging a little bit or the, um, HP ProLiant is bulging a little bit, but in any case, they were rubbing against each other and I just could not get them to seat properly. Um, so I ended up having to drop the um, HP server down a full U. And in so doing, it took me... The, the rail system is complicated for the HP... Um, a, Again, once I kind of figured it out, it's it, it makes good sense, but it takes a minute to get there. And um, so I fiddled with it, fiddled with it, fiddled with it, finally got it to lock into place, and then forgot that I only did the left side and not the right side. And so I went to reinstall the server, and I could not, for the life of me, get the uh, rails to line up. And I kid you not, I probably struggled with it for a solid 15 minutes before it finally dawned on me what the issue was. And I, I could not have felt stupider than, you know, realizing that, oh, I never dropped the right-hand side to match the left-hand side. And so... Once I got that done, it locked right into place, slid in. Um, I will say that the HP rails are very, um, you know, once you kind of get it figured out, works really well. Um, very slick and easy to slide in and out. Um, and, you know, once I got that in there, struggled and struggled and struggled with the... Um, lights out management um whoever previously owned the server didn't fully wipe it before they resold it and so there were still some remnants of the previous company on there that i had to go through and clear all that out and get the lights out set up and then after that i still couldn't log into the lights out and so um I did a bunch of digging and finally found something that said it has to be HTTPS. You can't just type in the IP address, even though it doesn't actually authenticate with HTTPS. Once I did that, plugged in, popped right up, and then I was able to get into the lights out. Once into the lights out, I was able to go through and see that the memory was indeed failing on slot five. And, um, moved the memory around a little bit and got it up and running with the 512 gigs of RAM memory. So, um, and then 
tried to install, and I'm still not 100% certain if this is on me or on it or if there's another issue going on, but I tried to install an SSD into the server that was not in an HP assigned caddy, and it never showed up. But in retrospect, I did get HP assigned drives, put them in, and they still didn't recognize in those bottom slots. So could have just been the bottom slots are not working. I'm still still working on that part. Um, but um, was able to boot um, a quick Ubuntu, see that everything was coming through and working, and shut it back down. And then um, worked to get Windows installed um, once I got the drives in. So I got, um, and the drives are dirt cheap nowadays. Um, I got five of the 1.2 terabyte drives, put them into a RAID 5, which gives me um, a good amount of usable space. And it's not too slow. It, it, again, it doesn't have to read and write all that fast for what I'm doing to it. But the um, if I if I need to change it out later, I can. Um, it's not not going to be the end of the world there. The um, the Windows installation was a bit wonky. Um, so Windows by default does not support more than two physical sockets, and so I got it installed and then put in the product key that I got for uh, Windows Pro for workstations and got that up and running. But I still had a million things missing in Device Manager. I kid you not, just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll on all these base devices and system clock interrupts and stuff that you should not see missing um, were missing. And so um, I struggled and struggled and struggled to find a driver package. Um, HP does not make this easy. Um, they expect you to be a full enterprise client, and you cannot just go out and grab these uh, driver packages. Um, they lock it behind a uh, paywall. And so after doing more and more digging and finally figuring out what I was looking for, which was half the battle, um, I found a forum post that somebody was saying they were looking for that particular thing and somebody posted a torrent link to it. I was able to download that torrent, which for some reason was still alive. I thank whoever was seeding this thing. Um, it, you are a lifesaver. <laughs> um, and so I got that in there loaded all of those service packs and got the system up and running. And I uh, got Windows 11 Pro for Workstation installed. Um, all of the devices now show up correctly in Device Manager. And um, I'm starting to kind of kick the tires a little bit. Um, it is um, a very interesting system. I was very worried about the noise level on this one, because um, when you first power this thing up, it means business. Um, it is very loud. Um, it, it puts the super micro server to shame. Um, it is shockingly loud. And so I was really, really worried that it was just going to be unbearable. And But once I finally got everything booted correctly and the server kind of hits its steady state, the noise is not bad. Still elevated, but not bad. Um, and so let me, I'll do a quick show of this. And so this guy is the lights out management for the HP ProLiant system. And what you can see here, and the first thing I'm going to point out is that, yes, I know the networking card is very hot. I am working on that. Um, the HP is kind of designed for a configuration, and there's not a lot of room to play with that. So I'm, I'm having to get an adapter to put a fan uh, to blow some residual air around this networking card. But 
to that end, this whole thing is fascinating. So this is a 3D heat map um, of the uh, system. And so you can see here are the four processors. Um, you can see we've got our inlet tip temp here. And then these are the power supplies back here. And then you've got the um, hard drive controllers, memory buffers, um, all of that good stuff. And so you can see how it pulls in the cold air from the front and slowly gets warmer as it goes out the back. Um, really, really um, cool system. Um, very, very fascinating. And it's got, you know, information on anything that you could imagine in here. And if we switch over, I don't know. Yes. All right. Cool. So if we switch over to the power supply system, we can see that in idle, we're pulling about 345 watts with the potential to pull a lot more. Um, I don't think I've got a running log right now. I can probably pull it up. Um, but the I think the peak that I've seen is either 12 or 1700 watts. Um, once I get the GPU in there, it will be higher because um, that thing does pull quite a bit of power. But um, just the CPUs alone doesn't pull as much as I was anticipating. And so you can see here we have the four um, E78894s, and these are all running just swimmingly. And then you'll see here on the memory, and this is where it's a little bit frustrating because uh, memory board five is the one that's bad. And so I had to take the two DIMMs out of memory board five and move them over to memory board one. But that gets us up and going with um, the full 512 gigs of RAM. Um, but the one bummer is that it HP advertises that they can support 2400 but it only will run that speed if you're using um, HPE smart memory which is very difficult to find um, or at least I found it difficult to find on eBay so we're running non-HPE memory for the system um, but we've got the networking card here which is the ILO and then the Mellanox so really good um, go there and see the, um, and then I've got just a, a, an old uh, 980 Ti in there right now just for um, some video processing. Um, I've got another card coming in that'll do a much better job. And then you can see here we've got the storage with four and a half uh, terabytes of available space on a RAID 5. And so, yeah, that is that. So let's go back and see on power management. Uh, is it power meter? Yeah, power meter. And so if we come back over here. All right. So since the last time I rebooted, the highest was 976 watts. So not all that high on this graph, but um, when I was looking at it before the last boot, it was in the 12 to 1700 watt range. Um, and let's see here. Is there anything else that I want to show in the ILO? I don't think so. So yeah, this has just been a quick overview of the uh, HP Pro Alliant. Um, hopefully I'm going to throw in, if I'm doing what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to throw in um, some ending B-roll of the, um, uh, some photos of the HP Pro Alliant as I kind of put it together. And then I'll probably throw a quick video together of just the assembly. Unfortunately, when I was doing the assembly, the, um, I thought I pressed the shutter button. I must have double pressed it because it didn't record a good chunk of it. Um, and so that that footage is lost, but oh well. So anyway, this has been a quick update on where I'm at with the HP Pro Alliant and where we're going from here.